think maybe you should tell a bit about the history of the festival. Um, because the, uh, yeah, how it started was um, 19 years ago, because this is the 19th festival. 19 years ago, it was the first time that the National Ballet uh, didn't have the end of season two weeks um, performances in the Stadtschalburg. <coughs> so we had to do something else, because they moved away to the music theatre. Uh, I spoke to Jaap, and Jaap had a few groups. Ideas. Ideas about groups. About the summer programmation. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it was part of the summer programmation. The, uh, so that's, <clears throat> then we decided, okay, let's do these three performances. I think the absolutely first was Wim van der Kijbers with a performance called, I'm, I think, What the Body Does Not Remember. And uh, we did Stella of uh, uh, Rosas. And we did with, with the clocks, with the metronomes. And we did Moudances of Angels Marguerite, which is a kind of well-known Spanish choreographer who uh, later we didn't do anything with. But the others we did, and they're still kind of icons in our festival. I liked very much, sorry, you yeah. start. Yeah, well, it's difficult to say. <coughs> I mean, I liked Ea Sola when I saw that for the first time. I thought it was fantastic. With the old ladies. Yeah, the old ladies yeah, yeah. grinning, and, and yeah. I felt the audience being uncomfortable. Which year? God, how long ago was that? That was 15 years ago, I think. Yeah. We had, the funny thing is, we had uh, a sponsor then, and he invited about 20 or 30 people. Uh, it was an insurance company. So it was the first time these 30 people went to a, com a contemporary dance performance. And they saw old ladies grinning. They had no <laughs> idea what happened to them. <laughs> but it was so intriguing. Felix Rückert was the, was the yeah. uh, brothel performance, which was a big oh, success. Yeah, that, was and, nice uh, that was nice too. And, and Dave Sinclair yeah. was also very... It was a kind of discovery. Yeah. That was a nice, nice performance. I, I never forget, I mean... <coughs> um, you know how it is with all these dancers and running naked around uh, the audience in the beginning and there was a young couple and the husband said to his wife I'm going and she said I'm staying <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic and that yeah. proved exactly how the audience liked it yeah, yeah. either went for it or you left <laughs> so that was really I enjoyed that yeah Dave Sapier was a effect was a big discovery I mean yeah. we were one of the first who did it in uh, in our festival it's now finally is going to Paris here in uh, no Avignon it's going mm -hmm. and uh, after ten no eight years no six years ago we did it I think. Well, the point is, contemporary dance is not owned by Europe, and I mean that's the sort of attitude. There is a bit of an arrogant attitude towards that. <coughs> so we decided, let's go, uh, you know, look a bit further because there were dance festivals where you could see, and they did contemporary dance as well, uh, and and. That was interesting because it, it was a little bit different than what they did in Europe, I mean, with their background. So we found it very fascinating how you can... It's not Japanese contemporary dance, it's contemporary dance, Japanese people, you know, in their culture. The same with Africa, uh, India, and we thought it was very good to, you know, to follow this up. And we, we were still doing it, I mean, it, it's, it's, only getting, uh, it's getting bigger, not smaller. So that was, we always thought that was a good decision. Their idea was to combine uh, the established choreographers with the new choreographers. Uh, the established choreographers choose a new choreographer and they also sit after the performances together, talk why they like each other, why they choose the, the big one, yeah. choose the new one. And that's, uh, yeah, no, that's the thing that works quite well, I think. Yeah, it's, it's a young coming up choreographer. Yeah. So the established one chooses the young one. And then after, you can see the performance of uh, both of them the same night. And then after the performance, <coughs> there is a sort of discussion. And, you, and then these confronting questions like, well, why did you choose him? And why do you admire him? Which is very nice. And, and it's very successful because there's a lot of uh, audience. Yeah. We always do two, what well, two, sometimes three Dutch choreographers. We have now André Gingra, who is not Dutch, Canadian, but he lives in Holland. And uh, we think he's one of the few Dutch choreographers who also are international, uh, well-known, and can be kind of better than the average uh, Dutch choreographers. We have Anne van der Broek, who is Belgium, but who is 
in Belgium not very well uh, accepted, but very well in Holland. So, uh, uh, and we have Christine Chatel, but she does a special project. So uh, that's the other thing as a presentation. She uses the building and does with some architect students a very big project. But uh, no, we like André Gingra and, uh, and Anne van der Broek, and uh, these are the two Dutch workers we present. So on the, I think we have about uh, 30 performances uh, to, to our Dutch. But I think it's important also to present Dutch choreographers who have a kind of a potential international level. So that's the reason we do that. You, you sort of learn over the years how to how to work together, what you should do together. Yeah. So in the beginning, it was films were programmed. Now films are programmed in relationship with the festival. Yeah. Which are the choreographers, and she will look for films from these choreographers. So you get this sort of cross and these links between each other, and that works very well because if somebody's interested in a choreographer, he can not only go to the performance, he can see other work, he can see films, and that's. You know how it all closes together.